Hello and welcome, this is a video guide on how to boost FPS and optimize Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this guide will definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming PC systems with a higher degree of effectiveness. The guide will show you how to boost the FPS, it will also improve the overall game quality and your system's performance. In turn, this will help fix any lag or FPS drops that you could be experiencing when you're playing Red Red Dead 2. Red Dead is certainly not the best in terms of optimization, but it's definitely not the worst either. Nonetheless, let's go through a few simple steps that will show you the best settings to apply within Windows as well as in-game and a few recommendations along the way as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, we'll go over the best Windows 10 PC settings step by step. Step 1. Clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes, and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game. Or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step 2. To ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low-end gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the NVIDIA GeForce overlay, open up NVIDIA GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay for Xbox Game Bar. Using the Windows search bar, type Game Mode Settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it to off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on Captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open Settings and on the left select Overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says Enable In-Game Overlay. After you've done that, navigate to Advanced and make sure Hardware Acceleration is set to Off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the window search bar, type in Game Mode and click the Settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to Off. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but game mode is actually known for being more problematic than helpful. Currently, Microsoft are still working on a fix. I will put a link in the description below that goes into detail about the game mode option in case you're wondering how it all works. But for now, just switch it off. Step number four, navigate back to the window search bar and type in graphics settings and then click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and this needs to be set to on. If it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC once you've turned it on. After you've done that, navigate down to Graphics Performance Preference and you'll want to add Red Dead Redemption 2 to your games list. Now to do this, you basically need to find where it's installed and add the games launch application to the list. So first of all, click on Browse, then you have to go to your Rockstar folder, which you'll find wherever you install the game. You then click the Red Dead Redemption 2 folder and then simply add the application that's named as RDR2. Once that that's done and Red Dead has been added to your list, you click on options, you set it to high performance and then you just click save and then you're done. Step 5. Go back to the Windows search bar once again, type in Power Plan and click Edit Power Plan. At the very top, click Power Options and under Preferred Plans, ensure high performance is selected. Step 6. If you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step 7. Background Apps. Simply type Settings into Windows search bar and click the icon. Then select Privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see Background Apps. Then simply switch off Let Apps Run in the Background. 
Okay, so now we're going to dive into the game and we're going to change a couple of things. First and foremost, you should run a benchmark test. Once that's all done, let's jump into graphic settings. There's quite a few settings here in Red Dead, so I'll try and make this quick for you. Resolution should be your monitor's native resolution. You can lower it further on a low end PC for higher performance, but visuals will take a hit. Screen type should always be full screen for best performance. For VSync, you should really set it off if you already have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. If you don't have that function within your monitor, then having VSync on or off is really down to you. If you have it on, it'll stop your screen from tearing, but it will cap you to 60 frames per second, and you'll get input latency, which is very low, but it could give you a disadvantage against your competition in multiplayer modes. If you decide to set it off, it will remove the input latency, but you might see some screen tearing happen. If you decide that's the way to go, then it is recommended that at least you cap the frame rate to no higher than 60, because that will help minimize tearing. Triple buffering, pause game on focus loss, and constraint mouse pointer should all be set to off. For texture quality, either low or medium, low will give you the highest gains with around 6% boost to FPS. Anisotropic filtering can be switched off or set to times two. Lighting quality should be on low for highest FPS. Global illumination should also be on low. Shadow quality low is the best setting as it doesn't impact visuals and gives you around a 5% boost, which is the same for far shadow quality. For screen space ambient occlusion, you should just set it off or you can try medium. Reflection quality is best on low for higher FPS. Mirror quality can be set to either low or medium. Water quality should be on low. There's a lot of water and, and rivers and waterways in game and basically a lower setting will allow your GPU to render it more easily, bringing down its load. Volumetrics quality should be on low, particle quality on low or medium, tessellation can be set to low, and finally TAA, I have it set on medium, but FXAA and MSAA should both be set to off. You can also set TAA off for an extra 2 or 3 FPS boost. Now in advanced graphics, you should probably leave it all as per your benchmark test, but you can certainly put things on low or medium in order to squeeze a bit more performance out of your GPU but you might not see that much of a difference. Now of course all of these settings really depend on your PC so you should definitely play around and see what works best for you and your own system. I do honestly really hope the guide helps you in some way or another. If you do have any questions just leave them in the comments section and I will get back to you ASAP. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.